so today in today's video i want to talk about how they came up with the reference range for testosterone levels the natural testosterone range that is so there are four different models but the main one i've seen has a basically a scale from 264 to 916 nanograms per deciliter that's the the normal scale and obviously like i feel you know i don't feel that that way about this i feel like how is 264 anywhere close to 916 they're both considered normal but i would say it's such a vast difference that it makes no sense for how they determine this stuff it's it's the same way with any um anything you're testing metabolically anything you're going to see on a blood test you got to kind of take the reference ranges with a grain of salt because they're going to be all over the map and it's the same way with ldl cholesterol where they can say like you know they used to say you need to be below 130, then they bumped it down to 120, and then they bumped it down to below 100. So it's all very, you know, subjective. It's all constantly tweaked um, depending on pharmaceuticals, what they want to sell and things like that. So take that with a grain of salt. But this is the scale I've always seen. I've always seen the scale of 264 to 916 nanograms per deciliter. That's the traditional scale, the most common one. I have seen some that go up to like 830. And then I've seen others that go to upwards of a thousand, but this seems to be the most common one. And basically, you know, if you've ever wondered where did this come from, how did this come about this, this, uh, testosterone level scale. So this was in 2017, they determined this roughly five years ago, they came up with this range and they only used hundred participants, but hundred participants, you know, you can get a pretty rough idea of, of what you're dealing with now. This was healthy, non-obese men. So take that out of the equation, um, trying to remove as many variables as possible. Obviously, if people aren't obese, they should have probably healthier levels because their estradiol levels will likely be a little lower and more in sync with what you naturally see. So they're trying to remove variables. Obviously, it's never going to be perfect. Um, the age range was 19 to 39 years. So fairly young men, albeit... The testosterone level, which we might see as a 19 year old, could be drastically different from what we'd see at 39. Again, that's a huge variable, so that can play a huge role as well. Um, and they got the two and a half percentile, fifth percentile, 50th, 95th, 97 and a half. So those ranges they talk about here, the, the lowest two and a half percent of the study, the two and a half percentile, had a testosterone level, a total testosterone level of 264 nanograms per deciliter. So I am somewhat skeptical when I hear a lot of people talk about their testosterone levels being, you know, 180, 200, things like that, because right here in the study that they used to come up with the natural test ranges, 264 was the two and a half percent out of the bottom two and a half percent, because it's very easy math. There's a hundred participants, the two and a half percentile is 264. Um, the fifth percentile. So the fifth percentile was 303 nanograms per deciliter for test level, which again is fairly low. So if you're in the, if you're on the 300 scale or lower, as far as your test levels, you're in the bottom, you know, 5% basically is what this, this is saying here. Um, the 50th percentile, this is very interesting as well. 50th percentile was 531 nanograms per deciliter. So according to this scale, based on the math they did, 531 would be your kind of median range for testosterone, which, you know, we could say is your average rating in a healthy, natural person from the ages of 19 to 39. 531 would be the average test testosterone level. So that's the 50th percentile. And then where it gets really interesting, because I have seen, um, I have seen blood work before where, so uh, natural, lifters or natural people had a test level of like 900 well 916 would put you at actually let's even let's back it up further the 95th percentile what is the test level 852 852 nanograms per deciliter is the 95th percentile so so pretty much if you're in the if you're 800 plus test level you're at the very top you know one out of 10 people would have that and then the 97 and a half percentile was 916 nanograms per deciliter so this goes to show that you know we're not seeing test levels natural test levels above 916 really 930 so 
anytime, even if I'm seeing something in the 900s, basically that you're telling me then that that person is a complete genetic freak where their test levels are that much higher than everybody else. So I don't know about that. That's reason to be doubtful when you see such high testosterone levels because it's either an extreme outlier or something, you know, something else is going on. So you have to consider these things. But this is where the scale came from. This was in non-obese population of European and American men. And that was off of 100 people in 2017. So that's a pretty interesting one. Um, and that's really where the reference range comes from. Now, I've looked at tons of blood work over the years. And typically, I've seen guys five, 600 range. Hold on, let me... I've seen them in the five, 600 range. We got a dog barking. I don't typically see seven, 800 too often, although I have seen it in a few, but that is a very high level. And this kind of goes to show you in the middle, you got 500 at the very low end, you got 250 to 300 and the very high end, you got 850 plus. So take that with a grain of salt. That's only a hundred people. I believe there are some other studies out there. So let's see if we can find some other ones here. I'll have to pull them up probably in later videos, but it's kind of interesting to see that there are, you know, there's such a, such a diverse difference, you know, and I'd like to see if I could see the official numbers. I don't know if there's anything out there for that. You know, we could pull up and see exactly what everyone was at, but I think it's pretty interesting. The discrepancy there, that kind of gives you a rough idea of where people are at and casts a shadow of doubt when you see people at that very high level of eight, 850, 900, and they're claiming natural. It's very possible according to this, but it's a very, very low percentage. It's like one in a hundred. So you gotta take that also with a grain of salt. But it's just, I thought I'd share this. This is kind of where it comes from when you see it on your blood work, as far as the normal population, the reference range, this is where we find it. Now, I am probably gonna get things checked again in a couple months. I do it every three or four months using Merrick Health. You can use my code Pete. Um, I don't get anything from them. I just literally think their company's good. It's Derek's company. But that one is uh, my test level the last time, 271. The highest I've hit in the last two years is 409. I'm hoping, you know, to continue to rebound it. But the thing about testosterone levels that's interesting is I still feel quite good. Like, I don't feel bad. I feel I get insane pumps in the gym. Um, strength continues to rise, albeit much slower than when I was on anabolic steroids but I don't think testosterone levels are the end all be all. Um, this doesn't even account for free testosterone either. That would be a whole nother thing to look into. But generally when they're giving out prescriptions and looking into it, doctors solely look at free or total testosterone a lot of times. But really, like I said, testosterone levels, not the end all be all. I, uh, I have had fairly low levels since I came off. There's been some fluctuation between 250 and 400, like I said, but overall I still have a perfectly normal libido. I have, uh, my strength levels are going up. Like I said, everything, I have no bad symptoms, no low energy levels, um, even though I don't get much more than six hours of sleep. So I really don't think you can necessarily read too much into, into testosterone levels, but it is something interesting. That's just another metric you can look for on your blood work. But if I were to get things checked, total testosterone, free testosterone would be the way to go. Um, and you get a pretty good picture. And the other thing that we don't take into account here as far as what can happen, testosterone levels can range depending on your hours of sleep. Um, this was all done fasting in the morning. I should also clarify with that. But if you're not fasted, that can skew things. If it's not the morning, that can skew things. If you do it later in the day, um, testosterone levels can be influenced by diet to some extent. Um, they can be influenced by training. If you've trained hard in the days preceding it, that can sometimes lower it. So there's a lot of different things that can manipulate testosterone levels, which is why they can fluctuate on such a consistent basis. But this is just interesting. And I'll, I'm gonna keep some studies going. I'm gonna look at some other things. We're gonna do some deep dives here and I'll keep posting training footage. If you guys like the video, comment, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Um, appreciate the support. We'll keep rolling with everything.